Hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters, and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, and welcome back to this week's video. This week, I'm covering crazy fursuit making tools and materials you've never heard of. Technology has advanced a lot since the first days of making fursuits, so what are people using nowadays to create their works of art? Let's get on into it. Number one, 3D printers. 3D printers have become a staple of a lot of larger fursuit makers out there, myself included. 3D printers work by taking threads of plastic and melting them down to apply onto the build platform in layers, working their way up to form your original 3D model. Working with 3D printers means you can spend as much time as you like on your 3D model, ensuring a cleaner finish. It can cut costs as filament is not very expensive and you can set and forget your prints, saving time whilst you work on other fursuit pieces. 3D printers, people have made eyes, noses, head bases, claws, chest plates, visors, everything you could imagine. Now, if only we could 3D print fur. Number two, 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 thermoformers. Next up are thermoformers or vacuum formers. These are relatively new on the scene and work by heating up sheets of acrylic plastic and pressing them over a buck mold. Whilst a vacuum sucks the air and you're left with a hollow form of your buck. Ever wondered how protogen visors are made? This is it. Clear acrylic vacuum formed over a mold. Check it out. But that's not the only thing you can use it for. Some people have used it for eyes and even molds for resin. Speaking of resin, number three, resin printers. Resin printers are kind of like 3D printers, but use a completely different technique to create the model. Instead of applying plastic layer by layer, printers use a pool of specialty resin and ultraviolet lights to cure the model layer by layer, eventually draining off all of the excess to reveal your model. Resin printers work differently to 3D printers and are good at doing different things to 3D printers. Due to the print essentially being made upside down, supports are really essential and it can be challenging to get a good print from a resin printer, or so I've heard I've never used one. But the overall print quality on resin printers is a lot smoother and cleaner than their filament counterparts. These would be excellent for pieces like eyes and noses where a smooth finish is required. Number four, laser cutters. I gotta credit this one to the absolute mad lad glitch over on Twitter, who used his laser cutter to cut fur. I can imagine this would save a lot of time and get those seams perfect every time. Laser cutters are essentially what it sounds like. You use a laser to cut things. <laughs> it gets very hot and very bright and a big vacuum sucks out all of the smoke and debris. We had some in our design tech lab at school, not that I ever used them, but they seem really super cool. I begin to wonder if they could cut EVA foam for things like heads or feet bottoms. That would be really, really helpful. Number five, expanding foam. Everyone has heard of resin, but not everyone has heard of the magic that is expanding foam. Expanding foam is a two-part chemical mix that rises like bread to form foam in the shape of your mold. First, to do this, first you create your master base from clay or 3D printing or other methods. Then you cover that base in silicon. And finally, you cover that in a two-part plaster shell to keep everything together. You let it set for a day or two and take everything off and discard your original base. You reassemble everything, obviously minus the original base, then mix off your chemicals using proper safety procedures, pour into your mold and wait half an hour to demold. Now you have a foam version of your thing. Congratulations. This is especially useful for things like feet paws and head bases, as you can reuse your base as many times as you like and cut your carve time into a quarter. It's something that I've been experimenting with myself lately and I have been loving it. So what did you guys think of those? Any other wacky and wonderful fursuit making equipment you've heard of or seen? Leave them down below and I might make a part two. The fan art feature for today is Wholesome Anarchy over on my Discord server, who has done me not one but two awesome pieces of art. They spoilt me rotten. Their socials will be down below. Thank you so much, Anarchy. They are absolutely incredible. That's all for this week. I'll see you guys next time with a brand new video. Goodbye now.